Okay, let's go over suffixes. So prefixes come at the beginning of a word. Suffixes come at the end of a word. So these are more descriptive terms um, that, that we attach to our word roots that help to further describe what's kind of going on with these word roots. You know, like, like the suffix itis, inflammation. If you attach itis to the end of something, that means there's some sort of inflammation involving that specific structure, like hepatitis, inflammation of the liver. Okay, so let's, uh, let's jump into these. Okay, so our first one, this is a, this is a fun one. Um, ak, all, ar, eri, eel, ik, ikel, eil, ein, ori, os, us, uh, tick. <laughs> there are a lot of these. Okay. So some examples, ilio, femoral, ili, ak, coronary, febril, uh, ambulatory, adipose, cutaneous, sept, ik, right? Oh, so all of these terms, um, just mean referring to. So there, there are a lot of these terms that just mean referring to, like iliac means referring to the ilium. Uh, iliofemoral means referring to the ilium and the femur. Coronary means referring to the, the, uh, the, coro the arteries around the heart, right? That make that, that crowns like structure, uh, coronary. Um, ambulatory referring to the ability to walk right so you see those terms they they all just mean referring to okay so there's not a whole lot to those those aren't really descriptive terms with regards to the word roots but you see those a lot um, when we are referencing structures in the body like the let's say the hepatic portal vein. Hepatic means referring to the liver. So it's the uh, a vein that you find in the liver, right? Hepatic. Um, so that's, a, that's essentially it. So just know that all of those terms mean referring to. We're just talking about this structure right here. Okay, moving on. Algia, like neuralgia, uh, myalgia. It's what, what I'm experiencing a little bit of right now in my back after shoveling snow the other day. Not very fun. Uh, fibromyalgia is an example, okay? So, algia means pain. So, if you see the term algia attached to a, a word root, that means there's some sort of pain involving that structure. So, neuralgia is nerve pain, some sort of nerve pain, right? Like sciatica. Uh, it could be classified as, as some sort of neuralgia. Uh, myalgia muscle pain. So if you go to the gym, work out, lifting, lifting weights, a couple days later, you get delayed onset muscle soreness, you might be experiencing myalgia, right? So algia means pain. Uh, mo moving on, clast, like an osteoclast. So we, we, we have those, those two different types of cells in, in, in connected tissue that deal with connected tissue, osteoblasts, right? Osteoclasts specifically deal with bones. Now, an, an osteoblast, again, think back to our oncology uh, word, word roots, right? A blast cell is a germ cell, right? Um, so it, it's a cell that builds things. Now, a clast cell is a cell that will destroy th things, break it down, okay? So you see the term clast, and typically you're only going to see it with osteoclasts. Uh, you see the term clast, you know that it breaks down something. Um, in, in this case, with, with bones, it breaks down bone tissue. So if you have uh, an injury to a bone, like you break a bone, the osteoclasts have to clean up the dead tissue and, and the damaged tissue to make a clean surface for osteoblasts to build new tissue. Okay, so uh, clast means break you know so it breaks it down into smaller portions that can then be removed from the body okay moving on uh crin like endocrine or exocrine you see the term crin it describes what a gland does and glands secrete right so endo and exo are the prefixes that determine what type of gland we're specifically talking about so endocrine glands secrete 
hormones into the bloodstream, exocrine glands secrete other substances onto a surface like saliva or sweat or sebum. Um, yeah, all, all of the stuff that goes onto the surface of a structure or the body is an exocrine gland. Okay, so crin means secrete. Okay, um, and you can even remove the C from that. Rin also means secrete. Think about epinephrine, right? Um, epi above, nef, kidney, rin, secrete means the same thing. Okay, uh, moving on, site, uh, like an osteocyte, erythrocyte, leukocyte, thrombocyte. These are all types of cells. Okay, so you see the term site, that means cell. It's, it's a form of a cell in the body. Okay. Uh, derma is our next term, derma. So again, dermo, dermato means skin. Same thing with the suffix. Derma means skin, like scleroderma. Okay, hard skin. Sclero means hard. Derma, skin. Hard skin. It's essentially what, what that condition entails, right? So uh, derma, you see D-E-R-M in anything, it's, it's going to mean skin, okay? Next up, ectomy, like an appendectomy, a hysterectomy. A couple examples. What do you think? What, are, what, what, does, what is an appendectomy? What type of surgery are we are we performing with an appendectomy? Appendo means appendix, of course. So what are we doing with the appendix? Removing it. Hysterectomy, surgical removal of the uterus. Sometimes even more, depending on how severe uh, the the thing is that's causing us to remove the uterus in the first place. Okay, so ectomy means surgical removal. You are removing a structure from the body surgically. Okay, ectomy. Moving on, edema. Now, edema, like pitting edema. You know, some people get edema and inflammation a little bit mixed up sometimes. So inflammation deals with blood in an area. And that's why inflammation feels warm to the touch. Okay, edema refers to swelling, and swelling involves stuff like interstitial fluid and water in the area. Okay, that's why an area that is swollen might feel cool to the touch, as opposed to an area that's inflamed, which might feel warm to the touch and have more of a reddish tint to it, right? So pitting edema, uh, lymphedema, these are examples where we see edema. So lymphedema, you get that the swelling of a, of a limb uh, caused by an, an accumulation, excessive accumulation of lymphatic tissue, lymphatic fluid in that area. Um, it doesn't, doesn't sound very fun, right? Okay, moving on. Emesis, like hematemesis. Hemat, hemo, blood, right? Hematemesis. What are we doing? Blood. Now this this is controlled by your medulla oblongata. What do you think? Part of your brainstem. Very important. Very important. Um, I, I have experienced uh, many stories involving this. Some maybe a little too embarrassing, but uh, emesis means vomiting. Okay, so it's controlled by the medulla oblongata, part of the brain stem. Uh, the brain stem, specifically the medulla oblongata, controls most of our vital functions in the body, like like breathing and, and blood vessel diameter, and coughing, sneezing, vomiting, all of these controlled by the medulla oblongata. Okay, so emia or uh, emesis, excuse me, does mean vomiting. So uh, emesis just by itself can be vomiting. Hematemesis means you have blood in your vomit, right? Not a, not a good thing. Don't want blood in vomit for sure. I've, I've experienced times where I thought I was going to start vomiting blood um, just because of how how many times I was vomiting in a row. It's like there's nothing left. Like what, what else can I vomit? Can I possibly? I have stories. Maybe someday I'll reveal them. Okay, uh, moving on. Emia. See, I started to jump ahead. 
just a little bit. Uh, emia, hyperemia, septicemia, uh, leukemia is another example. And so we see emia, it has something to do with the blood. It's, a, it's some sort of blood condition. Okay, so leukemia is a form of cancer involving the white blood cells. Leuco, white, emia, blood, right? Um, hyperemia, you have excessive blood flow in an area. So, so if you are massaging an area, there might be more blood flow going into that area. That might that's that's called hyperemia, excessive blood flow into an area, right? Septicemia, uh, where you have a blood poisoning, basically, where where there's too much bacteria and too much waste from the bacteria in your entire bloodstream, and that can cause you to be really sick and very very dangerous, right? Uh, so septicemia, blood poisoning. Okay, so emia means blood. Moving on, esthesia. Now we kind of kind of talked about this, right, with our word roots, I believe. Esthesia, all right, like anesthesia, paresthesia. What what do these terms mean? Like anesthesia means without sensation, right? If if you receive an anesthetic, you are receiving a medication that blocks sensation in your body. Uh, local or or general anesthetics. So again, local, just one area of the body. Uh, general, your entire body. That's that's what you would use to make you know make somebody pass out while you're doing some sort of surgery. You don't want them awake for. Okay. Uh, so anesthesia means uh, sensation. Uh, paresthesia, like like pins and needles, sensation. Uh, anyway, moving on. Ferent, like afferent or efferent. Okay, so we talked about af means moving towards a center, right? And f means moving away from a center. All ferrant means is to carry. So an afferent impulse carries a sensation towards a center. You know, that information goes towards a center, is carried towards the center. An efferent impulse is carried away from a center. That's essentially it. So afferent, efferent to carry. Okay. Uh, next up, gen, like carcinogen or pathogen or genesis, Sega Genesis, of course. Uh, I'm dating myself here. Uh, gen, what what does gen mean? What do what what do carcinogens do? What do pathogens do? Carcinogens produce cancer, right? Pathogens produce disease. Okay, so gen means produce, like genetics. Um, again, genesis, genesis, where something is produced. Okay, moving on, gnosis. Yeah, starts with a G, of course. No, that sounds a little weird. Gnosis. You get it. You know, like diagnosis or prognosis. Okay, so what? With a diagnosis and a prognosis, we are knowing things, right? It's it's the ability to know something. So a, a diagnosis is telling a person this is what you have. A prognosis is saying this is how long you're going to have this thing, uh, dependent on many different uh, circumstances, of course. But uh, but gnosis like this just means knowing. Like I know what this is. I know how long you're going to have to deal with this situation, this disease, whatever it is. Okay, moving on, gram like electrocardiogram. And when we take it, when we do an electrocardiogram, we are we are we are taking a record of somebody's heart rhythm okay so we're looking at the heart rhythm getting a record of it and comparing it to you know what's standard what's normal for a heart rhythm you know make, making sure that everything is in line with you know our baseline you know what what should our heart rhythm be at okay so gram means record so if you see gram after something 
that means we're taking some sort of record. We're measuring and recording that data. Okay. 